Peace, peace. How you doing? My name is Stephen Cofield Jr. And I'm here with Just Tech on Just Another Podcast. Check it out. Subscribe. Do what you need to do. My brother's fire. You dig? <laughs> yeah, that was dope. <laughs> Movie star quality stuff. Right <laughs> gentlemen tonight i'm excited because i got a special special guest um my brother from another my man steven cofield or stephen cofield what, what you prefer no no nah, no nah, nah. it's steven, steven. you know okay you know when i hear stephen i gotta you know do a drop kick or <laughs> molly wop or whatever nah, cause just, i know the, the name but no nah, it's definitely yeah, uh, I, I get yeah, yeah. listen i i get corrected sometimes i know a couple of Stevens with the PH, and I'd be like, yo, yeah. Steve, what's up? They're like, that's not my name. And I'm like, yeah. oh, look, my fault. It's so <laughs> crazy. It's so crazy that uh, we have that that kind of beef, but, you know, it is yeah. what it is. But yeah, it's Steve. Right. So it's just another podcast. It's just heck. Got my man, Stephen Cofield Jr., all right, in the building on, on Zoom. How you doing today, Stephen? Man, I'm good, man. You know, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, the weather's kind of, kind of trash, but, uh, you know, you just got to do what you can to keep your spirits up, especially during a time like this. But, uh, I'm having a, I'm having a solid day. I'm maintaining. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. You're always a man of good energy. Even, even when you really don't have it, I always notice that about you. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, nah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate mm -hmm. you giving me, giving me some of your time today. Um, or tonight rather. So, you know, getting into this, I like to ask my guests, who come on, I like to ask them, you know, to share a little bit about their upbringing, or, you know, the childhood, stuff like that, to kind of get to the root of who they are or, or how, you know, how things developed for them, to say the least. And, you know, I, I'll ask you the same question and you answer however you desire. All right. So what was it like growing up, Stephen Colefield Jr.? Man, uh, you know what? I had a I had a really uh, good childhood for the most part. I had loving parents, even though they were separated, but they still were friends and uh, you know took care of me the best the best that they could. Um, I had a I had and have a very solid family. Like on my father's side, on my mother's side, everybody you know is just just really loving. So I didn't my my childhood. It was a, uh, it was, it was great, man. It was great. My mom would make sure I had, you know, a banging, a banging Christmas. Uh, I just, again, I had uh, great parents and just always try to, again, have, uh, foster that positive energy. I'm from mm -hmm. Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. So back in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, it wasn't really, no. you know, we were out, we were, we, not, we went out to play. We was outside, but then it's <laughs> like when your mom put that rag on the, the window, you gotta get your behind in the house. <laughs> before it gets, gets crazy. So, uh, uh -huh. um, but yeah, yeah, it was like you're growing up, you know, you ducking cars and running in the streets and stuff like that. But, you know, when I needed to be in the house, my grandma and my moms make sure I'm in the crib. So uh, I did, I lost my parents at a, a, a early age. I was 15 and 16, I lost my mom and my dad. And uh, my godparents, they stepped up to the plate and, uh, and my uncle, they stepped up to the plate and took me in and uh, raised me from there. Uh, so again, like my family has just been like my backbone for awesome. a minute, but, uh, to sum up everything that I kind of just said, I mean, Stephen Cofield Jr. Uh, one, uh, my profession now is I'm, I'm an artist, I'm an actor, uh, but I've always had that, that, uh, that energy to create and entertain and, and, you know, I felt like that was somewhat of my purpose. So, uh. I think I was even, yeah, I was uh, even voted like class clown in my like graduating class. So <laughs> when I see, you know, high school peeps, they'd be like, yeah, I told you, I told you. I'd be like, well, you saw it, I did. But uh, um, I always thought to that, I never thought I could be an actor, uh, which is crazy. Mm. Not that I say it aloud, but it's just that because of where I'm from, not a lot of people, you know, made it to be on TV. So what I thought I saw on this TV was just like, it was an it was a, a, a enigma, 
Like it was just like, this is not something that, you know, you can do. Right, and right, right. it was just hard to really come about like, yo, this is something that I, I, I know I can do professionally. It wasn't until I, I got much older, maybe early 20s, where I was like, yeah, I'm in this, this, this you know, uh, nine to five job. And I'm like, it's got to be more to this. Right. It's got to be more to this. And that's mm-hmm. when I, uh, you know, took the plunge and started pursuing a career in acting. And then, you know, <laughs> ten, 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 10 years plus, I don't want to give out my age, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, been, been, uh, still on his journey. Okay. All right. So when, give me first memory of you either being in like a class play or something that kind of, you'd look back and be like, yeah, I I was kind of meant to do this. And that might've been like the first inkling of when you, when, you know, young actor, Stephen Yo, <laughs> man, that tickles me when I think about it. I, I'll give you two really quickly. Okay. Uh, one that was a total like, can you curse on that? Like a, a, a total, my, it was a my, total. Yeah, my content on YouTube is, is adults, even though YouTube <laughs> keeps emailing me, telling me they want to age restrict me. And I'm like, I already, I age restricted myself. So go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was a total shit show. The first time I really got on stage and did something and then the, I, I kind of redeemed myself. So the first time I was doing this black history, <laughs> this is crazy. I'm putting this out there, but it's all good. Um, yeah, right. I uh, I was doing this black history uh, show with my buddy. We were rapping and he talked me into it. And around this time in elementary school, I was a real shy kid. But when I was around my friends, I was a clown and doing all this other stuff. Right. So he was like, yo, man, this is this is time for the people to know how how, how talented you are, how funny you are. Like, let's do this uh, black history uh, rap about Martin Luther King. And it was sort of hypnotized beat. So he wrote it and everything. He ghost wrote it for me. And then all I had to do was get on the stage and do it with him. And I went to a Catholic school. So the talent shows, the nuns, the parents, everybody. And my mom didn't make it uh, on time. She was late. So it comes around and we're about to perform and he's doing his thing and I'm trying to vibe out, but I'm not looking at the crowd. I'm scared to death. And I'm looking at him. He's rapping. He's killing it. He's killing it. And then he throws it to me. And I got the mic in my hand. I look at him and I'm like, all right. And then I look to the audience and I got the mic in my hand and everybody's just looking at me and it's crickets. And <laughs> feedback from the mic, it was just, everything just stopped. And I was like, oh shit. And I'm in the seventh <laughs> grade. <laughs> Yo, I'm in the seventh grade, bro. The, yo, the, the curse, the shit just echoed into the auditorium. It was like, shit, yeah, shit. Yeah. And everybody, and I'm seventh grade, so there's kids. Everybody goes, ooh. <laughs> I was so yeah. embarrassed, bro. That's so bad. embarrassed. So I, I stole him off the stage and I run out. My mom is actually coming in and I run past her, like on some TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, what's going on? What's going on? And I, we walk all the way home because we didn't have money to like travel like that. So we would like walk, walk me to school and stuff like that. Uh, but I redeemed myself the next year, right? Because Kurt Franklin, you remember Kurt Franklin stomp God's property? Mm-hmm. Oh, what you talking? <laughs> so they needed a uh, they needed Kurt Franklin, and I was like, you know what? I'll be Kurt Franklin, right? Had the class behind me. When I tell you, we had on like the red the red uh, uh, windbreaker pants, white shirt because it was Christmas. Me and it was like twenty five of my classmates, and I'm Kirk Franklin. I'm running across the stage, <laughs> dancing, gyrating, doing all this craziness. They were like. Yo, this is the same shy kid, mm. like, you know? Mm. And I was just having a ball. And that, mm. that was my coming out moment. Like, mm. this, is, this is what I want to do. Right. This is exactly right. what I want to do. Right. And everybody was just high-fiving me afterwards. And it was, I, was a talk, I was a toast of the school the next, the next week. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you know, to answer your story in long, a long form, that, that was my breakout. After, you know, this, the, the horrible moment the year before. Eighth, eighth grade is when it usually happens, man. That's it. Right? Right? Because <laughs> right? in mean, high school, it was like, oh, yeah. all bets are off. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah, that was, uh, man, yeah, man, it tickles me thinking about that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, just a side note, I always felt like Kurt Franklin was like right on the fringes of cursing. I felt like at one point, <laughs> all his music, he'd be like right there. He'd be like, right. Is right. Curse? Is he cursing about yeah. the curse? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was long at his back. Right before he do it, he, <laughs> he know how to finagle it. So you thinking about whatever else he said. 
Yeah, yeah. he was dope. But no, yeah. that's an that's an awesome story. You know what I you know what I love is that when people people don't tend to think back to those moments. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like it kind of like the question stirs that moment up, and you realize, oh man, you know, or it's like, wow, like, yeah, I did that, and that's you know, they kind of connect the dots a little bit. So it's, right, uh, you just don't know yeah. like how like things really attribute to who you are today, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, you know what I'm saying? And that comes with growth, just understanding like all the things that you've done, like, wow, this is yeah, it's, it's, it's really special times. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And so, you know, so you were dealing, so what was that like dealing with you, with your parents, with, with their, with their, you know, their death? How was that? I mean, I, man, I had such a supportive family Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, you know, their untimely passing, that my godparents and my uncle, when everybody stepped in, they were like, you know, where's Stevie gonna go? Like, what's gonna happen to Stevie? You know what I'm saying? And everybody just jumped in and kind of did what they needed to do to kind of get past this moment or get through this moment rather. Uh, but it was, you know, just losing my mom, losing my dad on Christmas and then my mom the following Thanksgiving. Mm. It was like, and I was just, I lost my, my mom, my, I lost my dad, then my grandma, then my uncle and my, my mom within like 10 months, which is right. crazy. But I attribute everything, uh, all my success and my, my growth and just who I am and where I am today to my family. Like they're really the backbone, but mm. um, it, they helped me get through it, but it wasn't until I got much older where I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't properly heal. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, there's no telling like, how you know how you heal from losing your parents at such an early age but i didn't really start the process until maybe 15 years later maybe like 10 maybe 10 years later actually yeah about 10 years later i didn't really start the process because i was i was a young man i was like yo i don't you want me to go to therapy why like i can't right. go play with my friends i just want to go play with my friends like i'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to this party it's all right I'm, I'm good i'm good that's what it was i would just do I would do things to kind of fill this void. I would buy things so I can fill this void. I would be, you know, uh, just dating and doing all this BS, just not really healing. Right. So that's how I got through it. But it wasn't until like, shit, like recently, maybe within the last like five years where I really started to, started to heal. Oh, Start tough. the healing, you know? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's a really tough thing to process as a young person. Um, Although I've learned that this current generation, they're a lot better at healing. Like they're healing now, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Versus our generation or your generation, because I'm a generation before you, um, I would say. I would yeah, your generation, really? yeah, I, I don't want to reveal my age, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I felt like your generation did it a little bit better. My okay. generation was just like, chuck it up. You know, just, listen, that happened. Listen, you okay? Understood. All right, dust it off. Boom, keep moving. Keep moving. Understood. Understood. Um, your, your generation kind of is like, okay, not, it was like half 50 50. You either dust it off or you deal with it and you pick a side in which, you know, where you want to, where, how do you want to grow through this? Yeah. And the current generation is just like, no, I'm going to heal now so I can be a better adult. And I yeah. think I, I've been learning, you know, through, just talking to people um, within the podcast and outside, you know, that for you and your situation, I can imagine, you know, that how do you deal with four deaths within your personal circle? And then you know, as a teenager, when physically, you know, to break it down physically, your brain isn't developed enough to even be able to process that at 15 years old, 16 years old. Right. Yeah. And then mentally, you know, you're still living in New York City. And for those who don't live in New York City, yeah. it's very fast paced. You gotta, you gotta yeah. keep up. You gotta keep moving. Everything's like, right. you know what? Boom. I'm gonna put yeah. it in a box and I got it later. I'm gonna deal with yep. it, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, who particularly in our community, you know, the African community community, African American community and people of color, such and such, um, it's hard to put a a premium on mental health with so much going on and it's just like just push through you'll be all yeah. right just push through yeah just push through yeah and you know kudos to you for 
doing it when when you did it because at least you've done it. I know people who have Still dealt with it. similar. No, they're not, and they're kind of just like you know they don't like Christmas because it evokes memories, or they'll you know you can't on Easter you can't call them because you know whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. And yeah. So you know I think it's it's important for you, and I, I'm glad that you actually you know that you're working through that because it's. It's never something that you truly fix. You know, you kind of just say, you know what, for myself, you know. Right, because just, you don't understand like how that affects your relationships with anybody, whether it's friends, Mm. romantic, anything that, you know, that you're looking to nurture and cultivate. uh, It can have a tremendous amount of uh, effect on how you get to know somebody. Definitely. You know, and you're 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 so closed off and you're like, ah, no, no, I can't let people get to me. That's mm-hmm. that abandonment issue because they're going to leave, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got you. You're going to have to want to start the healing process. You know, I got to want to, you know, uh, uh, grow and and be the better version, the best version of myself. So where does that start? Yeah. Well, it starts by seeing a mental health counselor. If you you know, if you if you can, mm-hmm. you know, and that's. Mm-hmm. And it's chuck it up to again. You uh, you were alluding to this generation. I mean, because information is so available now, because things were hidden for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. our history, and then you know uh, the negative stigma of seeking mental, you know, mental mental health. Uh, you know, yeah. trying to improve your mental health. All that stuff was, you know, uh, it was it was taboo. So chuck it up to this generation for having the information and wanting to just be better. Like we know, we know this is, this is beneficial for us. So let's look into this, right. you know, and they're totally. not taking no shit. I mean, you see them <laughs> on the front lines with the protests and everything. So yeah, man, yeah. you know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they've been great. They've been great. They've been yeah, great. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing that because that's, that's a really personal thing. And I appreciate, you know, allowing listeners to kind of delve into you know, the backstory of who is Steve, Stephen Cofield. Um, so, move, you know, and I appreciate that because I just don't want to cut you off. But <laughs> no, 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 no. you said you said it earlier, you was like uh, Stephen Cofield Jr. And it's important yeah. for me mm-hmm. to know for, for everybody to know, like there was an OG before me. That's right. That had the, that had the same name, you know, so that's important for me. Anytime I'm like, you know, anytime, anytime I'm like in this profession and they want to kind of just put Stephen Cole. I say, can you please put the junior? Thank you. That's awesome. Like it, it must must be the junior because nah. it was an OG. All it right. No, nah, that's right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You spoke about your backstory a little bit, about your family history and stuff. Um, let's move forward. I want to talk about 2020 with you. Um, 2020 was an interesting year, so to speak. And... I'm just curious as to how, you know, what was 2020 like for you in terms of, you know, what was the experience like? You know what? I don't want to downplay, you know, what 2020 has been to a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. Um, I fortunately have not been hit with, you know, COVID or like, you know, uh, it hasn't been, you know, it didn't hit home like it did other folks. So I'm blessed in that way. Um, uh, But for the most part, COVID just, it just taught me how to be still. Mm. It taught me how to be still. It taught me more about being present. Like I had the idea of this is, this is what I need to work towards. But again, with the hustle and bustle of New York city and just life in general, Mm. uh, I was constantly just going, going, going like we all are. But when 2020, when, you know, this pandemic hit, it just, like everyone, just forced, forced your ass to sit down, right? Definitely. But then it's like, we don't know when, I mean, we're not even like through the trenches yet, but at the, at the time, we thought it was going to be a few weeks, a month or two, whatever it is. So at that time, had no clue when it was going to end. So I'm like, what can I do to utilize my time? Like legit, what can I do to utilize my time? And at this point, I was like maybe six months removed from my nine to five. I was working there for 12 years and I quit so mm-hmm. I can do this you right. know, full time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there were, there were peaks and valleys, but I was still trying to find a rhythm. 
Right. And and then COVID hit. Like I, I had booked some jobs and I was like, okay, baby, here we go. 2020, <laughs> what you got for me? It was like, oh, wow. Okay, sit your ass down. Okay. But just uh, you know, it was a it was a it was a time of uh self-reflection. Uh just mm. fo- more focus. I, you know, I did more meditation and prayer, taught me uh it really improved my spirituality because my family is very spiritual. I mean, we don't you know, we don't go to church every Sunday or whatever the case may be, but we're very spiritual beings. So anytime, you know, I may feel something or uh, I'm thinking of something, I have a tribe that I can talk to who can, you know, we can have a, a dialogue about it. Definitely. Um, that won't just, you know, uh, shy away or just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm very mm-hmm. fortunate that way. But 2020, man, it just taught me to, uh, it just taught me to sit down and be present and be more still and uh, do some, I did more, I did more exercises with my, with my mind as opposed to, you know, physical exercises, you know right. what I'm saying? Because that's right. also a, a muscle that we need to exercise. So during this time, it was just like, yo, what can I do? I learned how to play chess. I learned how to uh, speak sign language. Um, you know, anything uh, that can kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like anything mm-hmm. that could kind of keep me going up here. Um, it definitely helped me with uh, my craft, my acting, like, <laughs> I can I can gather words as uh, uh, maybe three times as fast as I did before, and you just wow. don't know. So it was a lot of just like just self improvement, really. Uh, but I've been very fortunate not to have been hit with uh, you know COVID, but uh, I've been blessed in that way. But just just trying to trying to stay out the way, but also just trying to find a rhythm and you know and uh, stay stay uh, you know positive energy. Hey, I definitely. Yeah. Were there any? Let's. Were there any struggles that you had to deal with in terms of? So I know you had to deal with sitting still. What were some other struggles that you had to deal with? Um, you know, just thinking like you're not good enough, like, uh, or that you know everything that you're doing is not, it's not going to anything. You get that imposter syndrome, you know, because mm. you know, because you yeah. know uh, everything you do is always like oh, it's not good enough. Oh, I need to be doing this. I mean, a lot of creatives suffer from imposter syndrome. And I think that was hitting me a little bit because it's like, all right, well, the business was closed, you know, <clears throat> literally was closed for a few months. So right. I was like, all right, cool. So what? let me find things to occupy my time. But then when it opened back up and things started to trickle back open, it's like, yeah, yeah I'm doing these tapes. Like, I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't get any work, you know? Right, and, right. I, and then I'm still like, uh, depending on unemployment, it's like, yo, I got to, I gotta pay my rent. Like, what is? So I started doubting my my. I started doubting myself and my ability to, uh, just execute as a as as the artist that I am. You know. So I really had self doubt, um, but my tribe really got me through. You know, Definitely. just kind of holding up that mirror. Definitely. Definitely. You know? Yeah, without a doubt. I feel like, yeah. especially in speaking to you, I could tell. Like it was definitely an up and down year for you. I could tell like you were ready. Like, I, And I think, you know, we all kind of, we didn't see how 2020 was going to really play out. Yeah. But I, I like 2019, like it was like, yo, I was like, I remember talking to you and I was thinking like, man, you ready, man. Like it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. And then 2020 put everybody in the stasis. Right. And a lot of people really, struggled with it and it, it's okay like it, you know i was telling people it's all right to, to to have these struggles to have these feelings because you know what this is the first time as people where we've all had to kind of sit still and right really look at right. yourself and think man okay what is you know who am i what's my life where's my life going what am i doing you know and those questions a lot of times get blurred with you know the the day to day business of life, but then twenty you know when twenty twenty sat everybody down in March, and yeah. then, you know April hit May June and it's like it's man like, what's going three on? months right three months of having to deal with myself Sheesh. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and I was already struggling with like you know uh, just thinking that I wasn't good enough because it's like mm. like imagine being told no maybe 50 times a month. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that 
kind of spills over into your personal life and you're like, mm-hmm. am I not enough? Like, why am I, why aren't I getting these jobs? Right. And then you have to understand a lot of the time is it's not because you're talented. It's not because, you know, it's not anything you have any control over. <clears throat> so you have to really train your mind to understand like this business, you, you know, you, you, uh, you get what you put in. And as long as you put in the work and understand that you can only control what you can control, then you just have to let go and let God, let everything else, let the universe, the cosmos, whatever you believe in, let let, let it take its course. Mm-hmm. But as long as you can say, hey, I bust my ass, I work my ass off, this is this is the best that I got, and what will be will be. You know, I had to train, I had to train myself to just be like, yo, control what you can control. You can control getting up and studying, right? Because right. you just want to be ahead of the next. You know what I'm saying? That that's 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 the best version of yourself. Yeah. So a lot of those things that I was thinking about before the pandemic, then when the pandemic <laughs> happened and it's like, all right, cool. Yo, the world is shut down. Right. So mm-hmm. just do what you can and what will be, will be. Yeah. Take it. I scaled it back. Yo, heck, I scaled it back from day to day yeah. to moment to moment. Mm. You wow. know, let me focus on this moment. Like, this is dope. Let me just, let me just get through this moment right now. Yeah. You know, cause that's how you gotta, you gotta, we can't plan for shit now. Right. Really? Right, right. Very true. Can't plan for much. So Very true. let me just focus on this moment <laughs> and then uh, let me get to the next one. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I've been doing. I think that's important, too, to focus on the moment. I think we're always, you know, we're always looking at, OK, what's down the road? And you don't you don't accept the moment for what it is and just bask yeah. in that moment. Um, yeah. I've, I've had to. I think that was like the next step in my evolution in that I had to sit down and say, it's okay. Number one, to pat myself on the back. (laughs) Okay. And number two, enjoy the moment. Don't think about the next moment. The next moment is what it is. Enjoy the roses now. Enjoy the, take this moment. Boom. Whether it's 30 seconds, five minutes, five hours, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got to be a lot kinder to ourselves, you know, Definitely, we have to, we have to, because that's going to help us sustain what it is that we're going through, what everybody's going through. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Definitely. You know, so you do what you need to do uh, to, to mate, to, to, to uh, live in this moment, do what you need to do so you can get to the next phase, the next phase and the next, the next leg of the race, then the next leg, then the next leg. So understand like, yo, I did, I did what I could today. I did what I could today. All right, tomorrow's a new day. All yeah, right, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So I I think you kind of segued perfectly into oh. my next question: <laughs> the thespian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you talked about the business, right? Mm-hmm. What What is the business of acting like, man? I, I don't, you know, I to me, just in my opinion, not just for what I see, you know, yeah. I always see like, you know. You, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm going for this thing. And I'm like, okay, well, he's going to get that. And you don't get it. I'm like, how did you not pick my guy? Like, what is, what is wrong with you? Right. What do you not right. see? And yeah. then you kind of drop, you, you drop tidbits of knowledge here and there that I feel, I'm like, wow, like, really? That's what it's like? And it's, yeah. you know, it just the, just the, the inside scoop of what the, in, the acting industry is like. And if you could share that with the listeners, that would be dope. Yeah. Um, well, I, I kind of, uh, you know, said a piece just a little while ago that uh, the business of acting is, I mean, it's, a, it's not a shit show. However, when you get caught up in the business of acting, you, you lose yourself. Mm. You lose everything that you put into the craft of acting because you've succumbed to the business, right? So the business of acting, like the example that you just said, like I'll sell you, hey, I auditioned for the show, da 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 da. Oh yeah, you gonna get that, Steve-O? Yeah, I know I am. And then I just don't hear anything. <laughs> so it, I mean, it could be anything, you know, because mm-hmm. the casting directors they're looking at the actors and they might think this gentleman is, is uh, super talented, but he's six three. Our lead actress is five five five. <laughs> yeah, too tall. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like. He's wait. It's like I can't control my height. <laughs> That's crazy. That's exactly what it is. Right. Oh, he's too slender. It's like I can't control my build. You know what I'm saying? Like it's really like we don't like his hair. Like it's really like that. And then when you add like the relationship aspect of it, oh, we 
we we'll see him, but we, he, you know, this guy is going to get it, but we'll do him a courtesy to see him, but he's, this guy is going to get it because of his relationship. Like the business mm. of acting is really trash. You know, wow. when you, when you, but that's why it's like, you just focus on what you can control. Right. I can, I can control like, Oh, I know I got this audition on Friday. Today's Monday. Right. I'm going to study my ass off. I'm going to study my ass off. And it's not about just studying the lines. Like if you want to be this person, be this person. So start understanding like, okay, what's, what's this guy's favorite color? Oh, okay. What's, what's his love life like? Like really dig. And that's doing the work. So everything else you can just let go because right. you d- you've done the best you could. Everything else is beyond your control. Wow. You know? So the business of acting, I mean, it's, I mean, it can be trash. It can be really trash, but that's why you just focus on the craft. And then you got to believe that what's for you <clears throat> is for you. Right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, yeah, sounds like, you know, it's, it can be political at times and it's, it's absolutely (laughs) political. Absolutely. It's, it's absolutely political, but what's for you is for you. So then it's like, Hey, I busted my ass. I did all this work. Why didn't I get it? Right. Wasn't for you. On to the next. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that's what it is. It's a long game because when you start focusing on it, I, you know what I get hit all the time, heck. Oh, they, they looking for a name. I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I understand what they mean by that because in order for them to sell this product, they need to slap a name on it, somebody who's more established. Not to say that, right. you know, Stephen Colfer Jr. is not a name. You are somebody, but hey, right. we need, hey, we're going to give it to Michael B. Jordan because, uh, he's a little you know, he's hot right now. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. exactly, right. exactly. So you just, you don't, you don't take it personal. Right. You don't take it personal because right. then you'll you be, and again, this is, you know, uh, I'd be taking it personal a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. I'd be with my, my, my Jordan um, iPad. Like, and, I, and I took that personally. I took that personally. <laughs> I took that personally. Um, but no, you can't take it personal, man. You can't, you can just do the work and what's yeah. for you is for you. Without a doubt, without a doubt. So when you, when you get a role, what is your process in getting into that role? Man, so I I start I start at the audition process, really. I keep a journal, I keep a journal, and all my auditions, what I need to prepare for, it's in the it's in the front, it's in the front. And then for the roles that I book, I flip it and it's in the back. Oh, okay. So when I meet in the middle, right. toss it to the side and start a new journal. And I think it's important for you to do it in the audition process just so you get an idea because the casting director knows when you're uh, specific. You know what I'm saying? They know like, oh, he's clear on who he is. You know what I'm saying? He's not just spewing lines. He's clear. He knows Mm -hmm. who he is. And they'll be more inclined to bring him in, to bring bring you in. Um, And then once I get in, once I get in a role, once I get the role, I go even further, like, man, like, what's this guy look like? Oh, he looks like Michael B, not Mike, not Mike, all these Michaels, Michael Ely <laughs> with glasses. So I might print out a picture of Michael Ely and put it with the character of this guy, what, and what he looks like and his wife, what does she look like? And where did they go to school? And, you know, uh, uh, I did a play when I was uh, playing somebody who was, you know, incarcerated. So I was like, mm. well, what's, what's that schedule like? You know, 24 hour schedule or like what's in his cell? Oh, he has crime and punishment in his cell. Oh, he mm-hmm. has uh, the war of eugenics by uh, Edwin Black. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah, how yeah, deep right. I go. Because yeah, you need to have <laughs> specificity. And that's that's the only way you can execute where it's like you're watching something. And you're like, oh, no, he's not acting. He he is this guy. You see this shit? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so wow. that's that's just a taste of my process. Right. Who who are some of your favorite actors? Holy shoot. Um, Denzel's the GOAT. So it's oh, like it's like when you say top five rappers, you can't say Jay-Z. <laughs> so Denzel, he's up there. Um, man, just some of my favorite is probably, uh, uh, man, I like Joaquin Phoenix. I like... Uh, um, Joaquin Phoenix is dope. He's, man, he's awesome. Super uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, you got me on the spot right now. Chadwick. <laughs> Chadwick. Chadwick. Rest in uh, power. Guy. Rest in power, Chadwick. Um, Andre Holland, I like. Okay, he's good too. Um, 
damn, my book is right. Damn. <laughs> I, I, wrote, I wrote them down, but I don't have them off the top of my head. But um, I like Leo. Uh, man, this is going to kill me when I get back to my book. Leo but the I watch, I watch, yeah, I watch yeah. everybody, though, bro. Yeah. And then it's like, I, I, when I watch movies now, because I'm in the business, I try to mm-hmm. watch it as a fan, mm-hmm. but I'm also watching it as a student because you can learn from everybody. Definitely. And then the technical aspect of film, you could just understand like how novice people are and like just different, just different things. So I'm just a, I'm a, a student of it all, man. I like to watch everybody and see, I'm a thief. Like I'm an artist. I, I steal, I take things. I think that's part of the business though. I think you have to, yeah. You know, that's just, you know, like, I mean, you can't, that's how you learn. I mean, it's not really stealing. It's just, you take I know. it. Yeah, it just you, sounds cooler. It just yeah. sounds cooler. It just you know, sounds yeah. cooler. <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, you take it and then you take it, you make it your own thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless, you're, yeah. unless you just do the exact same thing that they're doing, then it's then yeah. it's a knockoff. Then you're stealing. And then right. it's like, oh, uh, that's not you. Right. That's not right. you. That's this guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then it's yeah. something that's something I had to learn, too, because I would always watch Marlon Wayans and Chris Tucker and Martin and... I just had to find my own identity. I had to find my own lane because I was just, that's all I would watch when I was yeah. a kid. So all I knew was Chris Tucker and Martin <laughs> and Will Smith. Will Smith was probably one of the biggest influence influencers for me. Um, but then I, you know, I had to really deviate from having those Will Smith isms and Chris Tucker isms mm-hmm. and start really forming Stephen Cofield isms, you know, like, yeah. oh man. So I'm always learning and always just trying to be better. Stephen. Yo. What do you got cooking right now? If you if you can if you can give that if you can't I understand. Um, I got a got a couple of really interesting things coming up for 2021. Okay. Uh, small screen and uh, big screen. So uh, you know, just cross your fingers for uh, for me. Uh, but uh, think I got a couple of things in post production. I got a. a uh, my first feature, feature, my first full length feature film comes out. Uh, not too sure how it's going to come out streaming or whatever. It's called A Moderate Folly, uh, mm-hmm. written and directed by Wilson uh, M. Diaga. Uh, and uh, got a, I was, I was a short, short film king. Uh, <laughs> my whole <laughs> filmography is nothing but short films, but that's, that's how I made my connections through like some really, dope filmmakers and that's how you get noticed when you can make short films and then it goes all over the country. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have one that's going to be on, if you have direct TV, it's going to be on shorts TV channel 573 uh, for black history month, uh, rolling in the deep. And uh, we, uh, myself oh. and myself and the writer director, Marcellus Cox, we do an interview, a filmmaker spotlight and we do an interview to show the film uh, for the month of black, uh, black history month. And then uh, during the pandemic, we, um, uh, my, me and my uh, good good pal Jamil Gooden, he's a cinematographer. We went out to California to work with Marcellus again on this uh, another short called Mickey Holloway. Mickey Hardaway. It's a concept piece for a feature, mm-hmm. and that's going to be playing on Revolt TV uh, in uh, this month too. Wow, that's yeah, dope. yeah. That's dope, I got man. a little, I got a little little feature in. Um, Super Bowl Sunday, I got a little commercial, a little feature, a little small thing. So hopefully y'all see me. <laughs> I, I just watching. found out. I just found out the other day. So somebody told me. I was like, what? Wow, that's that's big, man. That's yeah, so millions of people me. watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's literally like five seconds, but you'll be like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm blessed, man. I'm I'm blessed. Uh oh, man. I'm blessed. I got yeah, I got a lot of things coming out. I'm just blessed. I'm just so yeah. grateful. Really grateful. You just gotta keep keep the, the positive energy up, man. It, it's you know, it, it doesn't sound like it's an easy road, but I feel like that's the test. You know, I feel, you know, a lot of those that came before you, they they weathered those same roads. And yeah. you know, they didn't they don't get to where they are now you know, without some, some obstacles in their way. And, you know, and, and of course the, 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 the politics of, of, 
<laughs> Hollywood, because I, you know, I, I can recall, I've, you know, I'm, I always like watching interviews and, and, you know, stuff like that. And I remember, you know, Eddie Murphy talking about, you know, him growing up in the Hollywood where they could only be one black comedian. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was just like, he was like, you know, he couldn't understand that. He was like, yeah. there was so many guys equally or even more funnier than me, but yeah. I just had the, I had the stage and he goes, you know, it, it was what it was, but he goes, you know, that's, that was the way Hollywood is. And I feel, yeah. you know, that it, I'm pretty sure that that was, that carried over into the movies, you know, Denzel had his, still has his moment really, because politics is different now. He's great. But, you know, at one at one time, there was just the one black actor who was yeah. in everything. And, you, you know, and it was it went from Eddie Murphy. Uh, Wesley Snipes was the guy for a minute, if you could recall. Passenger yep. 57. <laughs> Always yeah, been yeah. on black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was a good movie, man. That was a hell of a People good sleep movie. on Demolition Man, too. People Demolition, sleep on Demolition Man, man was man. dope. He was dope. Man, yeah. listen, the blonde hair, he was no joke, yeah. man. Yeah. He was killed. And, I, kudos to him for breaking out of the New Jack City role, because you know they wanted to typecast him. You know they, they wanted, wanted to do New Jack City too. He's like <laughs> Nino's dead. Right. Nino's dead. You want to cast him? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's it, He got out of that, and you know, you you end up finding out that he's more than just this this particular brand of person that they want to put out or whatever. People need to put respect on Wesley's name. Yes. If it wasn't for him and Blade. There will oh. be no Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's right. That's right. People forget that too. Blade that was- did a hundred something million. He was the first one to mm-hmm. really put uh, Marvel on the map. So right. give my man his 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 flowers. Definitely, my definitely. Man, Wesley. Forget about it. Money Train, what's up, man? Money Train. <laughs> I love Money Train. That's another one I saw. On. Yeah. No, I watch that you. all the time. And then you know that Will Smith. Kind of segued in, and it was yep. Will Smith's time for a little yep. while because they, yep. you know, they wanted to, they needed to phase out Wesley for whatever reason. They wanted to phase him out, and they brought in Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith was really big. Yeah, um, but I'm glad that that's kind of with Black Lives Matter, and especially like 2020 brought brought a lot of things to the forefront, and with the negative emails and everything that was going on, I'm glad that now people are getting a chance. At least, you know, there's a fair shot now versus before it was just like, well, we only got, we don't we don't really need Stephen Cofield because we got this guy, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, we, we, you know, we could just use him over and over and over until America yeah. gets tired of him. And then we'll get a fresher face, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah, but you know what I would say, man? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but what I've been working on is just understanding like who I am and, and my ultimate purpose within this, this, this business, right? Um, You start to figure out who you are and what you want to be known, what you want to, what you want to be known for in the grand scheme of things. Right. And I just want to do dope work. And I want to do thought provoking work that helps push my culture forward, right? Awesome. Like Chadwick Boseman, he didn't just tell us how to live, he taught us how to die. And I mean that in the mm. sense of, I mean that in the sense of you can't you can't find a bad article or video negative about that man. And right. then you start to hear about what he turned down because he needed to uplift his community, right? Yep. So we can all learn from you know, that, that brother. And right. even when I met him, I met him in an elevator right at, right after he performed in uh what, right after he did a uh, uh, civil war, he ain't blow up yet. Right. He ain't blow right. up yet. Right. I was still giddy off of him doing get on, get on up. I got this right. shit right here. <laughs> no, I just, I just watched yeah. it the other day. It's fantastic. It's like, why he didn't get a nomination yeah. for that. But, but I was so giddy off of that. Mm-hmm. I didn't really even recognize well, I didn't even like talk about like his performance in Black Panther. I was just like, mm-hmm. man, you dope. Get on up. Oh, boom. And man, he was just yeah. so kind. But it's just like in the grand scheme of things, that's what I want to be known for. That you start to really understand who you are and what where you want to be. So when you get to a space in your career, you'll start turning down stuff like that doesn't serve me. Right. I mean, I'm just doing that for the money. Right. I guess I'm gonna be away for three months from 
I'm gonna be away from my mm-hmm. family for three months and doing this and yeah, the money's good, but it's not serving me. Right. I'm not interested. Right. You know? Exactly. So if you start to do that and start to understand, like, I can afford to do this because my time and I, I just, I'm not, I'm not really about anything that doesn't serve me. I had to pass up on something the other day because it was an audition. I was like, I don't even want to audition for that because I don't like the, I don't like the direction of the show they're going in. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be in Louisiana for three months working on this and I'll miss out on other opportunities and I'm going to be, just because I'm working and I'm away, I'm going to be mad. Right, just because, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. serve me. But I think I did the work. I know I did the work to get here so I can afford to do that. Not without doubt. But I, my reps and my reps understand, like, like we'll have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Hey, send this to me first before you commit to me auditioning because mm-hmm. I'm not just going to do anything. Right. You know? So, but you also have to earn your stripes. So I've earned my stripes to the point where it's like, all right, now, if it doesn't serve me and I don't think, yo, this is this is salacious, like, nudity. Like, this is, doesn't serve the story. So what am I doing? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Because I, I know who I am in this industry right. now. Right, right. So, what will be, what will be, will be, what's for right. me, what's for me, but I'm not about to do no, no sucker shit if I can help it. No, you know? without a doubt. So. Shut it. Quality, quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. Yeah. Somebody said to me, like, yo, you got so many film credits, da 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 I'm trying to be on level. I'm like, well, first be you. Secondly, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's not about just the number. It's about the quality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely. all my films ain't good, but it's like, it's a story behind how I got it and how mm-hmm. I connected with somebody behind it or whatever the case may be. And then there's a, a gradual ascension to, oh man, he's got he's gotten better every year. Yep. I can tell he's gotten better. So yeah. you, you start to understand who you are in this business and then everything will work itself around you because you've set a precedent. Like, I'm not, I'm not for this. So, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, Steve, man, you know, from the time that I've known you, you know, you, I've always admired the fact, I've admired your energy. You know, I've I've never seen you angry. I've seen you like, like, I've seen you like, you're like, eh, okay. You know, that's irking me a little bit, but I've never seen you angry. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, like, how does he do it? Like, it's 24 seven positive energy. You know what I'm saying? And I could understand why when people see you, you know, they're just like, at least bring him in. You know, at least bring him in and we could see where he fits. Mm. And, you know what I mean? And, and I can understand it because I could see like your energy just like when you were telling me, I don't know, can I talk about the Ava DuVernay thing? Like not not in its entirety, oh, but. Oh yeah, well yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, I did some <laughs> I production gotta, you know, work for uh, yeah. Collins uh, Netflix, yeah. I Colin did, uh, Kaepernick. Colin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know you know yeah. about your first, you know, you guys are on a first name basis now, you know what I'm saying? But for the yeah. listeners, he, he did right. he did some work on the Colin Kaepernick story, uh produced yeah. by Ava DuVernay. DuVernay, DuVernay. Yeah. She directed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't, uh, I wasn't an actor. I was right. on I was on a production team. Right. But so that's I just I did that because of who was involved, you know. Definitely. And I mean, you tell me, I was like, wow, man. And I'm pretty sure they, you know, they were thinking, man, how do we get him? You know, we we could try to fit him somewhere, you know? And I remember you saying, oh, but he's got the beard and. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell it real quick. I mean, uh, the way it came to me is because my agent, he sent it to me and he said they asked for me. So they found me. I guess it was in the, you know, the whatever it is. I was in their directory or whatever. So he asked me to submit. And I was just like, stand, I've never been a stand-in. I've had stand-ins right. for my own roles, but I've never been a stand-in. So I looked at it and I'm not gonna hold you. I was like, stand-in, I'm no one stand-in. <laughs> and I crossed my legs. But, but then I looked even further, I was like, oh, it's Colin and it's Ava. Mm. I was like, you don't know what's gonna come from this opportunity. Right. So just right. going in and just be yourself, just be yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, what's the worst that can happen? I can submit. If they don't want me, that's cool. If they if I submit and they want me, then I'll be working. I get a chance to meet Colin Kaepernick and Ava DuVernay. And this is exactly what I want. I wanted to do thought-provoking work that pushes yeah. my culture forward. Yeah. So I did that and they end up, you know, hiring me. I end up, you know, working with Colin and, and, and meeting Ava. And it, it was just, again, I, you know, I told you I'm a very spiritual being, but it was one of the, the, the best spiritual experiences ever, that whole thing. During COVID, yeah, and to connect with her, uh, Ava, she wanted me to, 
because I was just doing a fantastic job, I was standing in for Colin. Um, she uh, she asked me, uh, you know, how, was I on TV yet? And I was like, uh, well, what you mean? I just, I did what well, Colin gets off the bus. He walks up and she was like, no, 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 no. I mean, were you on TV yet? And I was like, oh, no, nah, you know, Avon. No, 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 it's cool. And then her AD was with her and she goes, uh, oh, well, you know, we can't get Steven on TV because under the under the mask, because we have to wear masks. <laughs> Safety first, wear your mask. Right, right. Um, Ava, he has a beard. She was like, oh, I don't care. I just want him on. She was like, ah, oh, it's a period piece though. She was like, ah, oh, man, brother, I want to get you on TV. So I was just like, hey, Ava, it's all good. Just get me on the next one. And I went <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not, that's not, you know, I'm not, a, I've never done standing, but I've had standings for me, but it was just mm-hmm. about, let me get in there and be myself and you just never know what happens. And I had, the, I had a blast and I got to meet two pioneers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Man, I'm, I'm just grateful. So, hey. <laughs> I'm just, I'm very thankful, very thankful, but you'll see it. You won't see me on the show, but you'll know like, man, right. Steven was part of that. Right. And, 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 and the production crew made sure that I felt like I was an integral part of, of it, you know? That's so it was, it was fantastic, man. Great, yeah, very great. Imagine. <clears throat> and that's yeah. part of, that's part of your blessings, man. And I know that 2020, that sit down process was a little rough for you, <clears throat> but I'm glad that you kept your head up and, you know, now, you know, this is the reward for enduring <laughs> 2020 and the, the, the rigorous, pro- the rigorous mental process of dealing yeah, with yourself. It was. Yeah. And th- these are the blessings that are coming. And, and let me tell you, man, you, I see so much enormous talent that I, it won't shock me if, you know, three years, five years, two years, a year from now, you know, you're like, yo, man, I landed this gig and you know, I'm going to be in Australia filming for, you know, whatever time. And, and then, you know, I, I listen, I need to do one red, I want, I need to do one red carpet. That's all I want to do. Just go <laughs> <laughs> so do it, man. You know, but yeah, bro. Note to self, uh, give uh, Hector uh, one uh, red carpet. <laughs> yeah, but. I got you, man, you, I got you. You have such enormous talent, man. And you, Thank you, man. You you have such great energy, beautiful energy, beautiful spirit, and that's going to carry you. And, you know, whether or not you do land that big role, you know, I feel like, you're, you know, the, the evolution of Stephen Cofield Jr. and that you've, you've come to realize, you know what, I have to do what's the better for me versus just doing anything just to fulfill what's, you know, because a check is a check, you know, and you can just get a job for that. You know what I mean? But, you know, like, it's like you said, you know, in scene one, you know, I had no shirt on and I'm talking about politics. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, it's like, what is this really doing for me? What is it really doing for me? What is it really doing for me? Right. Right. And I think that's the part where I think you've kind of gotten that a bit earlier than most people especially young men and young men of color um, in that to do what's best for the self was more, is more gratifying than to just appease, you know, your bank account. Because when you do the, when you do the, the best for yourself, the money will come. And kid you not, you know, you look at Chadwick Boseman's career, I'm pretty sure, you know, he did, he turned down roles that probably like, had him as drug dealer A or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you know, look, what, yeah. look at all the pieces that he's done, you know? Yeah. People forget, like, he did the Jackie Robinson story and I was like, yo, that was- That was his breakout breakout. <laughs> yeah, you know? that, was, that was such an awesome movie. And I was just like, man, like, I was like, yo, that's the dude from that, that Egyptian movie. And he was doing the weird voice in that. I'm like- He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I was just like, who, you know, like for them to have him do that and then he's, now I see him and he's he's Jackie Robinson. He brought that to life. And I was like, man, and then, you know, like you, I saw him in Civil War. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, he, he kind of got that. And then Black Panther just like, that was just one of the more powerful moments, you know, of my life to see a, a full-fledged, mm. you know, Black action hero that wasn't corny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, like he wasn't like Meteor Man or you know, and I right. love that movie. Meteor Man yeah. was dope. 
for you know yeah 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 yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like he was dignified and and he yeah. he carried you know he he just his pose was just amazing and throughout everything and you know one can say like him and Michael B Jordan that was just like acting clash because they were just you know Michael B good. Jordan man was just phenomenal and Chadwick Boseman just countered and it was just great. When they two, when those two shared the screen, it was amazing. For, yeah, for the it was a good, it was it was yeah it was it was great for the culture. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, yeah. I but think, you, uh, yeah. but for me to get to this point where I can mm -hmm. start to understand and pass up things that don't serve me, I had to go through the trenches. You know, mm -hmm. I had to you know say a lot of yeses when I when I really meant no. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's what I thought I had to do. Right. You know, and being newly represented, it's like, well, we got you this audition. So it's either you take it or you leave it, you know. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you you start to earn your stripes and then you're like, you know what? I mean, I've been in this business for more than a decade. I mean, you can you can kind of see the work that I've done from mm -hmm. films to commercials. Right. So I know that if I'm if, if if this project doesn't serve me, what happened? Did you record? Did you you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, did you just disappear? My bad, man. Where'd you go? <laughs> Yo, it just it just disappeared. I'm sorry. I'm just edited you. that. I just Yo, it just it just went away. I don't know what happened, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, if the sorry. Uh, no, no. You said if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, I was trying to you. give you a place to cut. I was trying to give you a place to cut. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay. if the, if the, yeah, if if the role doesn't serve me, man, it's like I've I've, I've already earned my stripes, and time is most precious, especially in 2020. And, you know, everything has happened in 2020. And what we got to do is just kind of really, you know, uh, really, really reprioritize things and put the things that you thought were the little things and kind of put that to the top, like family and, you know, health and you got a yeah. roof over your head. Like now that's, you don't realize how essential that is. So yeah, you re, re you reprioritize things and then you start to really, uh, change your lifestyle you change yeah. your lifestyle definitely and you you know i was at a point where i thought acting was my purpose but it's like nah living is my purpose and acting is just a part it's just a piece of that mm. it's just a piece of that cuz if i if you know if, yeah. uh, if if i if i if i leave this body <clears throat> tomorrow i don't want everybody talking about how much of a great actor i am i want you to talk about how dope of a human you thought i was right, right. you know what i'm saying so it's just a piece of you know what we what we want to do but definitely Definitely. Yeah, man. No, that's dope. That's dope. And you are a dope human being. And you, you know, like you, <laughs> you know, you, you like, you're like fine wine. You get better with age. <laughs> I, 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 hey, we all do. I believe that, man. I really believe that. I believe yeah, that. Because yeah, in 2020, is hindsight. Like, yeah, right. I've been through that. I don't need to that's, go through that again. I know, no, I know now. No, if you keep making the same mistake, then who's the real dummy? Yep. You, dummy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Without a doubt. You know, yeah, you, you got amazing things coming for you, man. You, you trust me. You you just keep plugging away, and amazing things are gonna come. Whether it's professionally, personally, you know, there's a plan for everyone. I believe. Yeah, um, me too. And just you know, you just gotta keep plugging away. It's gonna lead you where where you need to be, not where you exactly. want to be. Where you know, right. and that's that's the key to this. You know what I mean? You know, everybody. It's all about want, want, want. No, it's what you need. Right. You'll get what you need. You know what I mean? And, and through what you need, then you'll, you know, if if there's ample room, then you get what you want. But, right. you know, it's it's dope. It's a dope thing. And I, it's it's been dope watching you grow to get to this point. Um, You know, I, you know, every time we hang out, it's always a dope, dope moment. You know, I... It, we always it's always fun man i, I always appreciate oh, it and, I agree, and you drop, man. you drop you always you always drop science and it's just like you know what nah this young kids got it man <laughs> <laughs> young kids got it like you know i appreciate that man <laughs> that that means a lot to me thank yeah, you man. and thank you for uh you know just being interested in to just hear my story and and hear me talk i i don't really i, I think i don't do well in in this space so i'm just i'm learning and you know all i can do is just be my my most authentic self, mm -hmm. and then everything else will, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, it'll it'll work itself out. So yeah. I appreciate you just being interested in my story. Yeah. Nah, man, you know? there's more to come. There'll be a lot of more people, a lot, <laughs> more, a lot more famous people interviewing you soon. I'm telling you, it's coming. I see hey, it. Hey, man, it's, I see it. it's it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I, you know. That's cool. All that's cool, but you know, I'm I'm trying not to be moved by that, you know, because I just want to yeah. just really, Stay just really moment. take in. Yeah, just really want to take in, you know, my immediate tribe and this space here. And people are like, when you get to Hollywood, when you get to Hollywood, I'm like, I'm not going to Hollywood. If anything, yeah. Hollywood is coming to me. Yeah, that's good. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm just yeah, very definitely. grateful. Any last words, Stephen Colfield Jr. Ah, man. Um, control what you can control. Awesome. Be kind Be kind to yourself. That's right. That's right. That's, That's what I would awesome. say. That's awesome. Steven, thank you, for, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you taking the time out. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your presence. Keep up the great work that you're doing. You know, the sky's the limit for you, brother. Yes, sir. Definitely. And, you know, thank you. That's all I can say. Let me give you your flowers. This has been <laughs> this has been a great experience and I love what you're doing. So keep keep going at it. Keep keep chopping away. And uh, I love I love to see your growth. Oh, I love to you. see where you are in this space that you're in. Oh, so thank you. anything I can do to help you, you, you have my number. Let me know. I appreciate that. Thank you but so I am much. One of your biggest supporters. So yeah, this is this is dope. This I is thank dope. you for that. I thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so he has been Stephen Colfield Jr. I have been just heck, and this is just another podcast show. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time, next channel, and look out for, for Stephen Colfield Jr. Man, when you see him, know that you saw him here. Second or third. <laughs> so you saw him somewhere else first, but you definitely heard him here first. Definitely. Word, word. All right. Thank you. Take care. Have a great night. Peace.